Hello, this is Sarah V, and today I am going to be making another blouse. I haven't made one since the fall or late summer. And I'm going to be making Simplicity 9467. I am going to be making View B, which is the one the lady on the front is wearing. And I am going to be making it out of some quilting cotton that I got at Joanne a couple years ago that has some little bees on it. I thought that would be quite cute. And I gotta iron it. After ironing my fabric, I checked to make sure all of my pieces would fit on the fabric before I began pinning the pattern down. I had lost a couple inches to the washing machine and I was just short of three yards and I'm a worrier. I am starting with the front and back pieces. In the extra side space I am fitting the front ruffle in along with the back ruffle and the collar stand. Unfortunately the sleeves were too wide and I had to cut them single layer. Beside the sleeves I was able to cut out my front yoke pieces. In the scraps left over from the top yoke. I put the other neck stand in the under fabric for the collar. I cut the neck stand in the opposite direction I was supposed to to try to save space. And I also did that with the under collar because at this point I still wasn't sure if I would have enough, but I thought I could probably squeeze everything in. At the bottom I cut out the back yoke and the side of the collar that would be visible on the outside. And I cut this one on the right grain line and also in the right direction so that the bees would be facing upward whenever you look at it from the back. In the leftover fabric I was able to cut out my cuffs. This time I am paying attention to the instructions that came with the pattern. I am starting with pinning the shoulders, yoke, side seams, and the side seams of the front and back. I've sewn enough that I usually don't feel the need to follow the instructions but this time I thought it would be helpful because I don't really make a lot of blouses in this style. And right now I'm also pinning the ruffle. Over at the machine, I am sewing the shoulder seams, followed by the yoke side seams. Now I am sewing the side seams of the front and back pieces. I am now sewing the ruffle together. At the ironing board I am pressing the seams. Some of them I am pressing over instead of open just for fastness of serging later. If I was using a thick fabric I would serge each side individually and press the seams open. At the machine I am running my gathering stitches at the top of the body pieces of the blouse. While at the machine, I am trimming the seams and then I will be folding it right sides together and sewing the ends shut. After sewing those shut, I will be clipping the corner and then turning it right side out and then I will be able to sew the gathering stitches the whole length of it.
After a long sit on the couch where I gathered the ruffle to the yoke and the bottom of the yoke, I ran it through the machine. At the ironing board, I am pressing the seam allowance down. After this, I decided to edge stitch the seam allowance down so that when it's in the washing machine, it will continue to want to keep the ruffle upwards. At my table, I am making clips in the fabric to mark where to fold the placket according to the pattern. At the ironing board, I am pressing my placket into place and pinning it in place. The instructions said to baste it and take it out at the end, but I ended up whip stitching it down so that when it goes through the wash, it doesn't get all funky. Moving on to the collar, I can just sew the collar up. At the ironing board, I am trimming and clipping my collar before turning it out and pressing it. Last week I started filming a video and then I never finished it. And this week I started making this video because I had a little bit of gumption and I had a lot more passion for this video than I did the last one. And if that's all I can get done, then I think sometimes it's okay to move on to a project that you're more passionate about at the moment because it's better than to do something than to get absolutely nothing done. Back at the machine I am sewing the stand onto the neck. After that one is on I can pin the collar to it and then pin the inside stand on. Then they are all sandwiched together and can be sewn. The video I was making was actually a shirt for my husband and I was fighting the plaid the whole time cutting it out because the plaid became misaligned in the wash so it was no longer squared up and it was just so frustrating. At the ironing board I am pressing the seam allowance in and pinning it in place. I hope that it isn't being abandoned forever. It probably won't be, but I do hope to finish the video at some point. At the machine, I can edge stitch the whole way around the stand. I really enjoyed making this. It's been a while since I've been able to whip something up in like a day and a half. I really like wearing dresses but I feel as if they almost bog me down because my brain thinks of it as twice as much work, which it kind of is because it's a top and a bottom together. Moving on to the sleeves, I am clipping 5 8 inch in to make the gap for the cuffs. After rolling it up, I can sew it at the machine. I don't think dresses would actually take me that much longer if I didn't get so distracted and take so many breaks. Now I can sew the sleeve seam, followed by pressing the seam. For the first time in a long time, I actually used a nice pair of scissors to cut everything out. And I'm in that mindset sometimes where I'm like, oh, but I can't use that because that's nice. Next, I can run the gathering stitches along the top and bottom of the sleeve. I have like three pairs of nice scissors, but I still choose to use those crappy blue ones all the time for some reason. Moving on to the cuff, I am sewing it together with the seam allowance for the inside folded down at the top. Now I can trim and clip the cuffs, then I can turn them out and press them. These gold scissors I'm using here I got for free on Fabric Wholesale Direct. It was for a Black Friday deal and I thought they would be normal scissors for cutting fabric, you know, and I opened it and they were like 
looked really big, and I compared them to my other scissors, and they're probably like two inches longer than them. I guess if anyone breaks in while I'm cutting out a shirt or something, I will be protected. After gathering the bottom of the sleeve into the cuff, I can sew them together. I have a pair of pants that has a hammer strap in them, but every time I wear them, I put my scissors in them and it makes me feel like I'm a cowboy. Now the cuff can be edge stitched the whole way around, while also catching the inside and closing the top. I feel like I should be going outside at high noon and whipping my scissors out and spinning on my fingers. It's also very convenient when I have to cut stuff out on the floor because I will travel with my scissors and set them down, but if I keep putting them in that pocket, it's all good. And it's at an angle that if I'm on the floor, it doesn't just fall out of my pocket. At my other machine, I am using a 5 8 inch buttonhole cam and the buttonholer to put all my buttonholes in. I put all the buttonholes in before attaching the sleeves to the blouse so it would be easier to handle on the machine. I think I might need to go in and remove some of the excess oil because it was getting oil on it and then I had to wash it. Back at the older gal, I am putting the sleeves in the blouse. They were gathered, which was nice because then I didn't have to fight against tucks and puckers. Last but not least, I can put in the hem. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think the bees are extra cute. Ideally, I would have liked to use a shank button because I think it would have looked cuter with the overall vibe of the shirt, but I had none that I had 15 of, so I had this big bag. It was like a sandwich size bag full of a bunch of these buttons and I didn't even get halfway through them, so. If I made this again, I would actually do this open space like the one in my orange tie blouse, where you kind of cut a square out and then you sew it like, like a bench or like a table in the seam allowance. So then you can flip it over and turn it in. This one just had you clip to five eighths and then turn it up and sew it. And the thing that's happening is that's created a weak spot and I'm going to have to put some, do some hand sewing there and probably some buttonhole stitches to protect the edges and try to keep that together a little better. I don't think that's the best finishing technique for that. The cuffs are big enough that I can fit my hands through them so I don't have to do these buttons when I put it on. The sleeves are also long enough. 
like I'm not feeling too much pull whenever I do this. Like they go up a little bit, but it's long enough that it's not like up to there. This shirt is also incredibly long. It goes down to my hips. So about down to there. So for really high-waisted things, it doesn't. Like if I wore some even more high-waisted, it would kind of look weird because of the way that this is proportioned with this details over the bust. It just kind of creates a big poof. More so than it is now already. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more sewing content, please subscribe. If you would like to see what I'm up to day to day, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Vintage. Thank you again for watching and see you next time.